Welcome to One to One. I'm Priscilla Winkwo, and I'm in central London today to speak with Yona Onasanya. She is one of seven MPs of Nigerian origin in the United Kingdom's parliament. Welcome to One to One, Fiona Onasanya, MP, yes. MP for Peterborough. That's right. So you got to Parliament. How yes. did that feel? Crazy. I think okay. <laughs> it feels a bit surreal to uh -huh. be sitting with people you've only ever seen on television. And when I first got into Parliament, so this was, I think, my third day, right. I saw Diane Abbott in a lift. Indeed. And the lift opened and she said, oh, do you want to come in? I froze. <laughs> I looked at her. I was staring. I was like, but you're Diane. She's like, yes, would you like to come in? I shook my head to say no. I'd, I couldn't even speak. I just shook my head. To be a part of that process, like I'm making history, that's really surreal. Mm -hmm. It's really quite humbling. So how has the journey been so far? Um, you know, how many months in? Or? So I'm um, eight months in. Okay. I got When I first got in, I joined the Select Committee for Communities and Local Government, which has now been renamed Housing, Communities and Local Government. Um, I was made PPS, Private Parliamentary Secretary for Defence. Okay. And I've recently been promoted to a front bench minister. I'm now a whip. I'm part of the whip's office. All within so seven all months. All within <laughs> seven months. So yes, it's been a very, it's been very quick. But I think I'm, I'm learning so much. And the whip's office is the best place to learn. Mm -hmm. You get to learn members' names. You get to know, learn about the protocol of the house and how things run. So no, it's very very insightful and I'm very grateful. But are you enjoying it? Yes. You are? Yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah. I feel, I've said before, that one day I would like to be the first black female prime minister of this country. Oh, now that's going to be <laughs> interesting. I mean, ethnicity, race is a conversation that we're having not just here in the UK, but across the globe. Absolutely. Um, and we know that we've, we've had some expressions by some of the um, other female MPs, Diane Abbott being one of them. She's been there for 25 years, over 25 years. 30 odd years actually yeah. um, in the House of Parliament. Um, when you came in as a woman of, of um, African origin, did you feel in any way that your, your ethnicity or race, um, you know, that that had an impact on the way you were being treated or were you welcomed, embraced and, you know, made to feel comfortable? I was absolutely welcome, embraced and made to feel comfortable. I think um, my mentor is Dawn Butler <clears throat> and she on the, the day that I was there and they come and take your photos, she came into the chamber and she was sitting opposite me. I didn't know who she was at the time. So I'm sitting there, she looks familiar, but I can't quite place her. She comes up to me, gives me a massive hug and I'm like, oh, who's this? <laughs> and she's like, oh, it's me, it's Dawn. And I was like, oh my goodness. She's like, yeah, I'll mentor you. She's taken me through so much, whether it's forms or needing advice or asking questions or assistance. Um, one of the other girls that I'm friends with, Eleanor, she is the MP for Wolverhampton mm -hmm. and she's actually PPS for Diane so it's like I, I think they really do seek to help you and make you feel like it's a community as opposed to isolate you. Now I must ask this question Peterborough was a safe seat for the Conservative Party and you came along and just bumped them off as it were how did that happen? So I think where I went through my campaign saying I would like to be your choice for change I didn't focus on attacking the opposition which is where I think a a lot of politicians go wrong. I think it's more important to say what you can do. And I said to them, look, if you feel that I can do something for you, if you're happy with things as they are, don't vote for me. If you're happy for things to remain the way they are, don't vote for me because I'm saying I'm the choice for change. If you change nothing, nothing changes. So make me your choice for change and give me the opportunity to show you what can be done here. What are some of the things that you're offering to the people of Peterborough, for instance? Immediately what I, I set out about to do, we have a problem with fly tipping in Peterborough. So this is a local issue. I went to see the council to ask them about it and they explained there's no money in the budget. So I said, OK, that's fine. I'll pay for it myself. So out of my own salary, not out of expenses, I pay for the leaflets. There's no reimbursement to me. I pay for the bulky waste collection once a month. Surely that's not sustainable. How, how can you personally keep that up, you know, for, for how long? The time period that I've given myself is 12 months because it is very expensive. Um, yeah. It's £836 a month, to be precise. Small mortgage. Um, and so I think it's actually more than my mortgage. So what I'm seeking to do is encourage businesses to get involved. The council then turned around and said, actually, 
maybe we can do it as like an initiative. And I was saying that there was no money, but now there is. But I don't mind. I'm not here to, to cry over spilt milk. Let's continue two heads are better than one. If there are businesses that want to get involved, please get involved and let's all of us clean up the city mm -hmm. because it links to other issues, pest control, antisocial behaviour. And it's things like that that I'm seeking to counteract. But how many more of these type of issues will you be needing to spend your own money on? Um, before you're bankrupt in Peterborough? Mm. I don't think it's a case of needing to spend my own money because I could have done But then done if you're everything. saying, you know, well, if you don't have money, that's okay, I'll pay for it. That's not what I'm saying. Because I went to the council first to say it's your responsibility why is it in this situation? And they advised me that they do not have the money to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. I then looked at my budget at what I could afford and because it affects me as well, right. I would like to make this better. And so that's why I did that, but for a year, it's not that I'm saying for the whole of my first term, that's what I'll be paying for. So then what happens after a year? You mentioned you're trying to encourage businesses to also yes. participate, yes. but are you doing anything further with the council to ensure that they yeah. take this up yes so and the deal council with it the council are doing it they also said that they'll have a bulky waste initiative there's a skip company that also got involved and said they'll give free skips the issue with skips is that the waste gets mixed so it's easier with what i'm doing you've got two vans you've got one that takes the electrical goods the other that crushes up to six tons worth of waste i have them for four hours mm -hmm. and then you leaflet the area the week before so that people know where to bring their items to a collection point and they'll be there and crush it and they can drive the stuff off empty and come back. So at the moment, I think start as you mean to go on. So my intention is that I'm starting something and that I do hope that Peterborough City Council will keep it up. It's not just about collecting the waste as well. There's another place called Norwood Lane right. that I've been saying to the council, look at this, step. travellers live at the bottom. You can't keep blaming travellers for dumping on this lane. Why aren't there security cameras? I'm not paying for security cameras cameras to be put in but they agree with me actually yes there's more that can be done so I want to work together with the council to tackle this issue fly tipping is just the tip of the just iceberg. the tip of it I know that the NHS is something that is very close to your heart mm -hmm. and indeed to all of us um, and it's also uh, an area that you've raised in the House of Parliament yes um, you know the Conservatives are some are accusing them of you know trying to privatize it, trying to get us all paying for our, our medicals very soon. How do you think this is going? What are your thoughts on what's happening? And are you able to do anything to get the government to change direction? I think what we can do to get the government to change direction is to continue to lobby them. Mm. Um, what is happening is absolutely horrendous. It is not, I don't, what I don't understand when I sit on the bench and I look over at government, it seems like it's a parallel universe. What, so what when, do you mean by a parallel universe? So when I, when I say that, we're yeah. sitting there, I know that there's, uh, there were ambulances queued outside the hospital. There was no beds to get patients into, the waiting hours had gone up. The, targets that government had set itself were not being met. On the other side, they'll say that the NHS is the best prepared it's ever been for winter, that it's absolutely fine. What are we talking about? That we are scaremongering on our side and making people believe that actually... When you say on the other side and on, on government. our side... So okay. I'm with Labour. So right. when I say our side, I mean oppos like the opposite the opposition side of the bench, with me. Yeah. Their side is government side. So in government, yeah. they will tell the opposition that what we're saying is not true. They will say, they being government, we don't know what you're talking about. The NHS is the best prepared that is, than it's ever been. The question that I ask is, you advise that you're investing in the NHS mm -hmm. and that you're investing more than other governments have. But my concern is the investment is not enough for the demand. Right. If you cut something, for example, if I use an arbitrary figure of 10%, if you cut something by 10% and then say, but everyone, we've invested 2%, there's still an 8% differential. Absolutely. So that's where my, my background, I'm sitting there thinking, hold on, you're saying you're investing more. We know that the demand of the service is higher mm. and you're telling us that we're wrong. Can you please advise us whether the amount you've invested is sufficient to maintain and keep ahead of the demand? They won't answer that question. 
Now, as you mentioned there, you know, you're part of the Labour Party. Yes, I am. Um, do they have the strength to be able to get the government to move their position on the issue of the NHS, as you've just mentioned there, and put in, really putting more money in rather than saying, we're putting more money in that's a lot less than what we're taking out, for instance? I would say yes. Because, How? Because look at what's happened. So if we look, they've put money in. So even though it's not enough, they've still moved from their position. We're going from a position of there's not money, we need money. OK, here's a little bit. OK, you've given us a little bit, but it's not enough. So you have to keep on pushing. You can't stop and go, oh, we've got a little bit, so that's good. No, it's not good enough. We don't just want good, we want better. <laughs>
the referendum is not it's not legally binding yes why is the labor party not taking a stronger stand given that the vast majority of the people they represent said we want to remain what labor's saying is look we understand that you want to leave, the majority want to leave, and we respect democracy, so we will respect that majority decision. However, how we leave is not what you understand it to be, because that was never given to you as an option. Okay. So that's what we're doing right now. Immigration was a huge key area. Can you see the UK leaving the EU without having to deal with Free movement especially, because that's, that's the area where immigration comes in. So in respect of free movement, that's why government's saying that we will not remain part of the single market or the customs union. In my opinion, I think that you can't tackle immigration in that way. Why? Because we've got a, a soft border, for want of a better expression. There's no border with Northern Ireland. Ireland. Uh, yeah. If you have us leaving the single market and customs union and you're saying there will be no fixed border, my question to government is surely people will just go round and come in that way. If there's no hard border, if your issue is, let's leave the single market because we don't want free movement of goods and people. It's not the goods part, it's no, the, the people. people. So we don't want free movement of people, so we're going to leave this. But if you're going to still have a soft border somewhere else, people will just come round and come in that way. What we should be saying is, look, we need to have managed migration. We don't know exactly how many people are here and we need to look into but, that. But isn't our migration managed already as a team? Is because you know we we know that the immigration rules have been changed over the years mm -hmm. tighter than they've ever been you cannot come into this country without a visa save if you're of course an eu um, citizen um, and so we already have that in place um, why then do we need to have another managed migration so it it's not really in place because if you bear in mind we have it for international but not for the eu but and, then but then if we leave Will they not now become international? Yeah, yes, yes. But we also need to bear in mind that you've got these EU migrants who are working here in our NHS, teaching in our schools. Mm -hmm. So they are paying, the migrants that are here are paying into our system. Right. We need them because they're supporting us. We haven't invested in the skills of our homegrown for want of a better expression and so what happens is you're complaining that they're here taking our work but actually what happens if they're not here mm -hmm. what will then happen because we do need them there's we need to make EU migrants feel welcome and actually understand the contribution they pay to our society okay. instead of labelling them and saying that you're all immigrants and you're not welcome because they are and that is a fallacy. You were born here. Yes. You're of Nigerian origin. Yes, I am. Um, do you think that the Nigerian diaspora, um, for instance, can have any impact in, in the Nigerian um, political situation? I think so. You took a deep breath. There. I took a deep breath because I just think there's so there's so much that we can actually learn from there as well. Interesting. I think that British government, because we say that we're government, no one really asks questions because we're seen as not being corrupt, whereas in Nigeria or in other African countries on the continent is, of yeah. Africa, where they have elections and there's problems and there's issues with the votes, they'll say it's all corrupt. They have problems with votes here. And it's not seen as proper to really scrutinise those senior really? ministers. Because, I mean, yeah. um, because Nigerians will say that politicians here get scrutinised and are even put in prison, whereas politicians in Nigeria can just about get away with murder. How many politicians here have been put in prison? Well, at look least at the for expenses. the expenses. But look at but the at expenses. But at least we've had, even if it was one. Right. Um, whereas you have zero over there. There's all different layers of what I'll call corruption, for want of a better expression. In Africa, it's the same. If you've got money, then actually you can get to places that someone with money doesn't have access to. Mm. So, But it's exactly the same here. We talked about the House of Commons. In fact, I've got a badge here, 50-50. So this is basically saying that the Commons should be a representative representation of half and half. Half and We've half got of what? Females okay. and males. So you've got 
208 women at the moment, but there's 650 MPs. The 35% affirmative is something the world has been speaking about mm. for quite a while. Only Rwanda has that in place. Yeah. We have a female um, prime minister. When you say 50-50, what is the work that is being done to increase the numbers? So we need to encourage women to put themselves forward for public office. Mm -hmm. And not just women, young women, women from black and Asian minority ethnic backgrounds, yeah. BAME backgrounds, um, disabled women, all women come forward. Starting with your constituency, what are some of the things that you're doing to inspire women to get involved? So one of the things that I've done recently, I went to the ICRA Academy, which is an all girls academy. Mm -hmm. And I went to speak to them about women having the right to vote, the centenary of the women's vote. It's Indeed. been a hundred years, yeah. but it's not all women. It, at this time, it was women over 30 that owned a house, so you're really middle class. Yeah. And it was, wasn't until 10 years later that it was all women. But I was saying, look, we have a voice. We may not be the same, but we're as good as. So we're equal but different. Mm. And actually, I think you need both. You need that balance. Females have a, a brilliant, unique perceptive, perspective sorry, and perception right. of matters. And I think we should bring that. So I go to the schools. Mm. I I also have said I'm willing to mentor young people. I've been to quite a few academies and schools and done um, assemblies to speak to them. I've said to them, here's another Fionaism, the sky's not the limit when there's footsteps on the moon. Like it's a yeah. limitless sky, <laughs> you can go as high as you want to. And that's why I say, yeah. I want to be the first black female prime minister. I may not be, but it's, it's fine to aim high and miss, but not to aim low and achieve. Wow. If you aim low and achieve, you will stay at that level. So I'm always seeking to go up but like a relay race, I'm running forwards, passing the baton backwards mm. so that people can come up behind me and go higher and further than where I am. Well, what can I say? Thank you so much You're for your time. Welcome. It was great to have Lovely. you. Thank you. Thank you.